Good evening everyone Another one of those possible videos En route to work On the night shift And so I wanted to We know a little bit of more inf A little bit more of information about The terror attacks on the Crocus City Hall in Moscow And so I wanted to make an update since the last video some things were still up in the air but now we have some more substantial data I had a live stream with uh, Russell Bentley with uh, who whom put out um, an interesting theory I mean Russell doesn't have any, many doubts about who it was although I tend to agree with him I always sometimes against things that I am really sure I always reserve a little bit of doubt you never know that's why I am against the death penalty anyway because mistakes are always possible so but we know that the the four main suspects that were arrested were indeed the perpetrators the people that show up on the CCTV footage we know that they are uh, trained using weapons and we know that they are the ones that also appear in the picture with the ISIS flag behind them now I will go a little bit about ISIS and and I wanted to say that if you remember ISIS uh, some years of 2016 was was uh, rampaging across the Middle East in Iraq and Syria and I remember President Barack Obama referring to ISIS as their next target now I mean his words I do remember I haven't seen I haven't I didn't go back and watch the video but I remember our priority now is going after ISIL as he said it and then as the Americans pretended that they were fighting ISIS and I say pretended because this, this is too much obvious you have to be a moron not to understand this because ISIS was like it was conquering land after land and it was it seemed unstoppable with the Americans <laughs> fighting them on the Middle East somehow the American bases always remained unscathed and unarmed by the ISIS attacks also Israel never was a target for ISIS Nevertheless, ISIS was only defeated when Russia got in the picture. Go back to this data, go back to this history, check for yourself. I do remember, I used to follow it daily. And, and uh, Russia was the game changer for ISIS. And then the Americans after that still had the nerve to come and claim victory over ISIS after it was almost like they were helping them <laughs> and not and not fighting against them because they were more concentrated in uh, for example the Israelis were more concentrated in bombing the Golan Heights and uh, other targets other claim to be Iranian assets and ISIS in the meantime was just going around like walking in the park so this is what I want to say I'm, I'm, I will not go into the details of the creation of ISIS because there's a very strong lead that ISIS is actually a creation of secret services joint effort between Mossad and CIA I will not go in detail about that I mean I leave that for you I will only say what was apparent and ISIS was never an enemy of the USA 
a real enemy of the USA. That I know for sure. So, someone making a terror attack like that one in Krokus City Hall and blaming it on ISIS, it seems to me that they would be blaming on the, the easiest scapegoat, ISIS. An, an abstract identity entity. I mean, they've been defeated in 2018. Sometimes we hear of them, but not too much, but it seems like a little bit out of context, suddenly appearing like that in Moscow and making uh, such deed as they did. The other thing we know for sure is that they were like trigger happy. I mean, if you've seen the CCTV footage, it's they, they were really they are really cold blooded murders. The guy with the AK just shooting everyone, going in circles, shooting everyone that moves. It's really something to watch. So the other thing that we know for sure is th these four guys got in a car and headed for Ukraine and there is no doubt about this so I ask again ISIS <laughs> if they were real ISIS would they run away to Ukraine I know there are some news emerging that uh, ISIS cells working in Ukraine in 2016 I know if you search for this there are news, there are reports on this, and then it might be true. But if that's true, being Ukraine uh, state sponsored by, I mean, I, when I mean sponsored, I mean on life support, 100% on life support by the US and NATO, being a proxy of the US and NATO. I'm sure that the authorities of this country and all the entities that operate in this country called Ukraine would know of that for sure. I mean, it would be <laughs> too absurd that in the middle of all this, uh, an ISIS cell was just like that, acting there independently. And now we know more than this. We know that uh, at least one of these fighters was identified as a Ukrainian soldier. I don't know if former, but at least he was an Ukrainian soldier at some point. So there are also claims from the Russian authorities that they, in the escape route, they were going through this gray zone recently created gray zone because it's a combat area of Belgorod and so they they had a, a window there prepared for them to escape I think this is it begins it starts to be too much of a coincidence and I think there are too many indicators of the of the responsibility of this act and on the Western news the commentators and I will only refer now to the Portuguese news which makes me nauseous they are desperately trying to pin this on ISIS desperately to trying to claim that Ukraine would never didn't have anything to gain from this but the matter of fact is that uh, a lot of Ukrainian, pro-Ukrainian bloggers are cheering on this. Uh, Ukraine, the Ukrainian uh, government has sponsored terrorist acts in the past inside Russia, namely killing, for example, the blogger Tatarsky or Daria Dugina events that were heavily cheered in Ukraine and even by the part of the West in general because I will not I will not point out exactly who 
because it's still unknown. But Seymour Hersh had a good lead. Terrorist attacks like the Nord Stream. Also, the West has a history of engaging in lying since the beginning of the SFO. Being one of the biggest lies, for example, the Bucha, the so-called Bucha massacre, which, for example, the West has failed to provide, the West in Ukraine specific, specifically has failed to provide the names of the victims and no serious investigation has been conducted. As if, just let it go quiet and people will forget about it. This kind of attitude. And a lot of other lies about, I mean, Ukraine has been winning all the time, the counteroffensive would smash through Russian lines, all of these common lies that the, the, the media then propagates and uh, replicates. And so, it's not like there is not a history of this, or the West sponsoring terrorist states, terrorist groups, dictatorships, and the like. So let, let, let's be clear about this. If you, do, if you think all of this is like too far-fetched, and, and we are democracies, and they are the bad guys, and we are the good guys, if you still think along these lines, this video is not for you, and I think you should go and throw yourself over, uh, over a cliff. Of course, I'm joking. I don't want YouTube to erase this video for inciting some kind of violence. I condemn all kinds of violence. Uh, but at least you should maybe have your head checked or something. Or maybe measure your IQ or something like this. Because this is the reality. And so, while the, the West or the Western media does not present solid evidence apart from these pictures, that anyone can take a picture with a ISIS flag on the background. Anyone. I can be an ISIS operative tomorrow. Just, I don't even need the flag. I just go on the internet and get an image of the flag, put it on the green screen. Bam, I make a declaration, I am ISIS immediately. This is the proof that they have. It's solid as this. And so, I know that you are thinking that I am accusing someone already. I haven't... I, didn't, I haven't gotten to that part yet. And I, maybe I will not go to. But at least think for yourself. Measure all these de details. Think for yourself. Now for the big question. Pay attention to this. One of the biggest arguments from the West is that why would, what would Ukraine have to gain by doing this? We know that the front lines has, have been faltering. The Russians have been increasing the pressure on the front lines. Things are not going well for Ukraine. A lot of news admit, a lot of outlets admit that, that there's not much hope militarily for Ukrainian victory. And when that happens, when Ukraine has setbacks, I have said this in the past, when Ukraine suffers setbacks on the ground, some stunt happens. Some ship is targeted in the Black Sea, the Kerch Bridge is targeted, some bomb goes off in Moscow, some bomb goes off in St. Petersburg, some crazy attack, some incursion in, in Belgorod, PR stunts. And now terrorist attacks, because they cling desperately. The terrorist attack, in my opinion, can have one purpose. The purpose of making Russia escalating to the point that gives a casus belli or a reason for war or a reason for escalation, at least, from the part of NATO. This is... Of course, if it can be that the, they believe that they, if they do these terrorist attacks, they will destabilize the Russian society and that somehow they would revolt against Putin or whatever and they would get the, the so much de desired regime change. Which, if they think this way, I mean, they're pretty stupid, according to me. 
and also there are some hints in the past I've mentioned one in the, in the beginning of March the Western embassies in Moscow were uh, warning their citizens not to go into crowded places warning about events such as this so at least they would know something about it and then we can go back to Victoria Nuland's uh, latest statement about that uh, they would have some surprises reserved for Russia and people have been speculating about what would be what was she talking what was she talking about what kind of surprises so one of the possible surprises was the attack on the Kerch bridge which was uncovered by the leaked phone call between the German generals the other was the incursion in Russian territory, Belgorod, during the elections. And the other could be this one. So I don't know. Like I told you in the beginning of the video, I always leave a little bit... I, 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 I keep a reserve of doubt, always, of all, for, for all my claims. But it's... <laughs> It's beginning to look like something. I mean, that's for sure. That's for sure. And like I said, the West is no innocent. <laughs> Donald Trump said it himself. Do you think we are in an interview? I think it was to CNN or Fox News. I don't remember. Do you think we are so innocent? <laughs> Do you think we, we don't kill? Yeah, we know that. US is directly or indirectly responsible for millions of deaths in the past years, so it shouldn't be a surprise if they can orchestrate something like this. I mean, they are sponsoring a very dubious government in Ukraine, to say the least. So, so yeah, just wanted to share that with you. Gotta go to work. Bye-bye, see you on the next one.